This is the Night Force Action Report for Tuesday, October 29th, 2013 from HorribleNight.com. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joined this evening wow. by Ethan Moses. Hey. Hey, <laughs> Justin. Still trying to catch you off guard. Kind of worked. Jason, yeah, a little bit. I think Jason Thompson was prepared, though. He's he's laughing at your expense. Or yeah, yeah. S- smiling seductively. One of the two. I can't tell his facial expression shit. He's only been on the show a few times. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Wordless, though. Say hi Say hi to the people, Jason. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Sweets. Oh, my God. You know that? <laughs> you pulled Fat Albert. Was that Fat Albert? Yeah. <laughs> it's that whole trick, that Whoa. audio trick where you say somebody's name get them to talk so they can associate their voice with their name. He's, he's, he's my true it. identity. <laughs> oh man. I liked it. Ethan, tell me some stories before we talk about video games. What, what have you been up to? Oh man. Well, you know, uh, as I talked last week, um, really focused on fitness and, uh, as a result, really focused on adventures because fitness is an adventure. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an adventure and prolonging your life. <laughs> um, so my wife and I have been walking around the city a lot more, and, and Berlin's pretty big. I just I kind of realized that, and so um, we've actually not seen as much of it as maybe we should have by now. And uh, so we've been going on five to six mile, I would say city hikes. I, I like to call them city hikes, and we keep discovering really cool stuff. Uh, but Friday we discovered something that wasn't cool, and it was bad nachos. Um, <laughs> and it was weird, bad German because nachos. the nachos themselves tasted good they were delicious i was like oh my gosh finally because you know mexican food isn't as common over here they've got a bunch of different ethnic foods but mexican food not so much so when you find a a mexican place you go for it and just jump right in even if you're at a wedding just say sorry wedding i gotta do some mexican food just not that common here um but then funny thing happened is about 24 hours later we were just real sick we just were not feeling good at all um, and I won't go into details, but I could just tell you that uh, nobody was satisfied with that situation at all. And uh, I don't know, I kind of, it, it's kind of created a, a kind of a rift between me and Mexican food right now. Uh-oh. Uh, a rift that I'm really uncomfortable about because I love Mexican food. I really do. But I feel like I'm going to have to make it myself from now on because I just, I don't. And again, I'm not trying to call out the German government, but like, I don't know, man. regulate your Mexican food. I, I just, do you need to do you need to build some sort of wall between you and Mexican food? Well, I th- I think if there was some sort of oh man, that was a that was a deep cut. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was making a uh, Great Wall of China reference. Oh no, that's not here. I was just trying not think. to make any sense at all. Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kind of a bit, a bit. But uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's my big thing. That's that's about all that's happened. Is I I dealt with some Mexican food we after an adventure. A, we have a kind of one of those neighborhood Mexican restaurants, uh, like a block away from our house, and we've been there a handful of times. It's kind of like the you know lazy Friday night selection of we don't want to make any food, um, but really don't want to go too far away from the house. So we'll hit that restaurant up, and I don't know, you know, most of those nights. You know, you're kind of in that mood where you just kind of want to you want to be lazy anyway. But after like the most the most recent couple of trips, we kind of realized every time we go to eat at this place, we feel just terrible for about the next twelve hours. And yeah. uh, I don't know what it is. The food seems okay. It seems like every other kind of Mexican restaurant that uh, of that of that quality. Um, like I, you know, it's not like top level food, but it's not bad food. And but yeah, it just it just knocks us on our ass, and it's really uncomfortable. So um, I don't I don't I'm questioning Mexican food at the moment as well. Well, I'm I'm really concerned that uh, my tolerance I, I, maybe maybe not unlike um, you know dairy products. Maybe everybody is born with a tolerance to to you know to consume Mexican food, and then after time you lose that tolerance. And I'm kind of thinking because I'm an older man now. I'm mm-hmm. a 30 year old man. Um, you know, I've really got to be thinking about, you know, doing older man things and a lot of older men <laughs> can't eat a lot of Mexican food. And I think maybe this is like, this is like 30 didn't really affect me as much as I thought it was going to actually, I didn't think it was going to affect me at all. Cause I still had the face of a, of a 15 year old. Um, but, uh, but when it comes to Mexican food, like I'm kind of like, man, this is it. Like, this is the end of life. Like it's all downhill from here. Like once you can't eat, you know, a burrito or a chimichanga and just, and be able to deal with it for a couple of days, that, that's it's dead, man. That's death. <laughs> I might as well be dead. Do you, do you think that the tolerance, like, 
um, for dairy products and now Mexican food. Do you think it's like a it just wanes with age, or do you have like a quota? Like you can only do it so many number of times, oh, and people just oh, hit it. At different that's points. pretty interesting. That's actually. So you think you get like you got a solid one hundred yeah plates of Mexican food, and then after that, like you're food. done. Yeah. Like that one last taco, it's like it put you over the edge. And I think I, I actually made myself tacos two weeks ago, and since then, oh my god, dude! I think I met my my, my quota. <laughs> taco quota. My taco quota. My Tex-Mex quota. <laughs> oh that's, god! That's, why, that's what you do. You do you do Tex-Mex so it waters it down a little bit, so you double your your. <laughs> it only counts as a half a serving if it's Tex-Mex. <laughs> Wait, and Jason, where were you at? I don't know when I was two when I was first introduced to the the delicacy that is Mexican food. I, if I, you would have been there to kind of you know kind of like uh, water it down a little bit with your with your Tex, which I don't even know what the Tex is in Tex-Mex. Like what is that? It's bigger. What food is that? Ignorance. Is just bigger? Ignorance? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, oh, boy. But it, now it makes sense why Taco Bell target, targets that high school and college crowds only, because they're on their way oh, out. Yeah. So. And, and the drunks that, you know, <laughs> make bad decisions. And they, I, there's oh, got to yeah. be something with that, too. The, the alcohol might, like, allow you to have more as well. I don't feel like um, oh. that affects your quota. And my alcohol tolerance is quite, quite good at this point. So maybe that's kind of maybe that's how you cope with it. Like as you get older, you drink more, and that's just it's not because you're sad or depressed or looking back on your life and you know realizing you've wasted it. It's so that you can eat more Mexican food. Like, your, ta- your taco <laughs> quota and your beer quota start blending together. <laughs> Ethan, is there anything going on Halloween wise in Germany? I think we I can't remember we probably talked about this last year, but since you've been over there, what's the Halloween atmosphere like? Um, you know, the Halloween atmosphere, uh, has been kicked up a notch since last year. I mean, uh, it, that's on, it's on Thursday this year. So I'm, I'm going to be able to see, no one's going to come to our place. I can guarantee you that. Um, there's like, you know, like gates Take and all kinds of stuff. They, no, yeah, there's no, no, ch- no child's going to make it through my, yeah, there's no way. I don't even know what to give them because they're a lot healthier here. Um, but Talk we're going to a Halloween party on saturday before the marathon mm-hmm. um so i guess you'll find out <laughs> during the marathon uh, are you gonna be in costume how, how during the marathon? probably oh, awesome. probably it's a superhero themed um uh, event so I'm, I'm still pondering what what costume i'm gonna go i was gonna go as fat captain planet but then i realized <laughs> as as a fatter man um I'm going to sweat a whole lot and that blue paint is going to be all over the place. And my friend has a white couch inside. So I just, I don't want to leave like man sized blue prints on the couch. Cause that's like, you know, vomiting is one thing. Cause that comes with drinking, but just <laughs> blue stuff. Ew, how are you going to explain that to anybody? You know? I don't know. I'm picturing, how do you summon fat captain planet? you I think you replace, <laughs> you place heart with butter. <laughs> well, you, you summon him easily, but he's going to be the one struggling. He's like, Oh guys, wait a second. Just give me a second. Wheeler, Wheeler, just ch- Chill out for a second. Okay. <laughs> Fat Captain Plan has got to catch his breath. And then we'll go fight that pig face guy. You just make the monkey go get you more food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you guys have fucking rings that shoot flames and earth and stuff. Why don't you take care of this problem? Let me go ahead and finish up this plate of nachos because Fat Captain Plan has got to eat. <laughs> oh, shit. I but hit my nacho to, tolerance. You don't want to let that. The nacho quota. Yeah, you, don't want, you don't want that quota to get bad. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's what he. Then that would be the lesson of that episode. He would teach everybody about their Mexican food quotas. Yeah. Hey kids, you can only eat so many tacos, or else. <laughs> Forget game pitches. We'll do Captain America episode pitches from now on. <laughs> I think I'm on a uh, Halloween duty this year. I, I'm going to be alone in the house to hand out candy, and um, I was trying to think of like the most messed up way to hand out the candy. Um, which would be first I wanted to like have, I have a, like a, a glass, a glass door, uh, and I was going to be like sit, I don't know, 20 feet away from the door, like in a chair in my like <laughs> scream costume and have the bowl of candy at me. And when the, the kids would open the door, just throw it at them. And I was trying to think like, would that be better? Or would dressing up as a ninja in the yard and like jumping out from the bushes and throwing the candy at him that way be better? I say I, I originally thought what you were gonna do is you were gonna be in the in the house as far away from the door as possible with and just sitting in a chair and so when they open the door you're just like take the card. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bowl of candy on the floor with like a knife next to it. <laughs> or like handcuffs. That's what it is, like put the handcuffs on. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> we were we were joking. We've had a lot of uh, uh, Megan has a rule that if you're taller than she is and uh, your costume doesn't look like a costume or you're smoking a cigarette, uh, you get the Halloween candy <laughs> from last year because we still have that bowl. So, oh wow, we're trying to figure out how to that's set that a, up. So come to our house; it'll a, be <laughs> it'll be. Uh, adventurous. Yeah, that, that sounds delightful. You know, I'm a little are those, bit concerned. Are those guidelines posted like outside? No, it's purely it's uh it's uh, it's based on our judgment completely. So. It's gotcha. it's street smarts, man. Yeah. It's street smarts. People know this kind of stuff. So I'm a little bit concerned with you um using ninjas as as kind of a a, a, a tool of, of of frightening someone because we all know that ninjas are our allies and and we don't want kids to to equate ninjas to fear. We want them to equate them to to. Uh, what if I just dress know, up a shredder? Safety. Yeah, well, that's a colored a ninja. That's a purple ninja. Like when ninjas have colored costumes on, they're bad. Okay. The ninja in the black costume is good. I, know, I learned I keep, that from American Ninja Part Three. I keep holding out hope for Sub Zero. I think you know. I think he's a good guy underneath all that. He, he well, he was. No wait, There's multiple Sub Zeros, aren't there? I, one of them was probably. bad. There's a robot Sub Zero, cyborg Sub Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Depends which of the Mortal Kombat fiction you follow. But uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh jason what's been going on uh not a whole lot just working yeah just, uh, too much we, would we, you say uh, yeah yeah i actually uh, uh resigned some responsibilities and ended up doubling down <laughs> on on stuff i guess i was trying to get myself a little bit more free time but that does not seem to be the case these days oh. so i don't know I don't know how that happened. Was Google? But, yeah, is, we're, is it Google's fault? Did they screw up your plans too? You know, it is Google's fault, okay. and and so they're they're paying me back by letting me have the old hangout still. <laughs> I think. Well, that's nice of them. But well, no, yeah, we're just uh, you know at work. We always host this big uh, safe trick or treating thing for kids, and so I've got to I've got to mess with that tomorrow night setting up, and then actually be there on Thursday. So uh, I can't tell you the last time I actually was at home on a Halloween night giving candy to kids. I, I, cause I've worked there for going on, was it 14 years now? Mm. And so I, I couldn't tell you the last time I was actually doing something on Halloween night that wasn't work related. Okay. Well, I won't take your so, advice so on my, how to throw candy at kids, uh, questions then. Well, see, yes, yeah, that, no, because as I'm at this, you know, very safe, free community event, I'm thinking of ways of terrifying children. <laughs> <laughs> for well, you 14 know, years, so I've, I've got them, I've got them ranked up there. How how safe does Halloween have to be? Was Halloween safe when we were kids? Because I kind of remember my parents being like, "Hey, just go. We'll see. So, see in two hours. Is... Try not to eat too much candy. Like everything's real safe now. You know what happened? It's in that parent handbook. I mean, there's just. Certain times of year, you just roll the dice with your kids, and Did Halloween's you? one of them. Just, you know, we'll see what We've happens. got three. Hopefully, one of them makes it out. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you. Yeah, that's why you have multiple. Is just so you increase your odds on Halloween. <laughs> you also increase your odds for tragedy, so you don't want to be. Uh, you want to be too careful there. Oh, that is true. That is true. <laughs> It's got dark. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Was, at first, I was going to make a joke about all three of my brothers being killed one tragic Halloween night, and I was like, no, nah, that's not the tone we want to set. We just talked about nacho quotas, and now we're talking about oh, horrible murders. Anyway. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. So, speaking of tragic children's tales, uh, Jason, do you want to give a little little pitch here in your notes? Yes, they uh, finally announced that we are getting the season two of The Walking Dead for mm. uh, PC, I believe. Is I think it's all of them, really yeah. what they're. Yeah. Um, well, they're releasing the Game of the Year edition on the 360, PS3, and PC, so um, it is going to consoles. But yeah, season two of The Walking Dead is going to be here before the year is up. Of course, five more episodes following Clementine, mm-hmm. who we know from the last uh, series, basically. Um, can I spoil it by now? I mean, okay, she's it, in, she, all, all, she's in this game. That's that's all. She's she's in. I'm the, willing yeah, to say she's in. She's in this game, and they're shifting it to her perspective, which yeah, I think is going to be, be pretty cool Clementine. because yeah, they'll be, wow. they'll be able wow. to do some some fun stuff. Uh, so basically, the zombie apocalypse as a child, mm. which should be pretty interesting. I but uh, yeah, five I episodes f- for about thirty. No, twenty three dollars total. I kind of freaked out because 
I just don't trust myself with being responsible for her again. And now I'm like directly responsible for her and <laughs> I really want to play this game, but it makes me really uneasy because I just Yeah, I, see and I and that's the thing, I didn't I only watched somebody play it, so this will be my first actual playthrough of brand new content other than the I guess the episode they released as sort of a supplement a couple months ago. So I'm looking four hundred days, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking really, really forward to this because I'll be able to just play it from, you know, a fresh perspective and and go from there. So I do still actually have to play the first five episodes so that I can sort of have my own decisions caught up and stuff like that. So you should should marathon that. (laughs) You know what? Yeah, that that would actually work. Well that would take that would only take about ten hours. You could get that knocked out. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm, that. I'm curious how, um, when I saw that announcement, I thought, cool, like, there was, like, I wasn't upset by it at, by, at all, but I think, man, like, what direction will you take it in? Because Lee had to make some some tough decisions. As a grown man, had to make some tough decisions. Clementine is a child. Yeah. Is she going to still have to make some real tough decisions? Because, I mean, this game could be, oh, yeah. like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it'll be, it'll be pretty intense. Like, I'm kind of looking forward to that. I think it's going to... I don't know, because obviously they have to ramp it up, you know, like they have to take it to the next level. So I'm really curious to see how that works, because I don't, I don't remember the what the name of the game was. But there was a, uh, there was a game. It was like a supernatural game when you played as a kid, and you, you got to think like zombies at this point aren't not necessarily Lucius. scary. If you're no, not Lucius, but um, it, it's not out yet. It was a Kickstarter game, but basically their whole idea was, you know, everything was scarier when you were a kid, and so now no. that Clementine is a, a kid, I mean, you're not. I mean, again, Lee could handle himself for the most part. Clementine, she's not going to have the same options. She's not going to be, you know, knocking people's heads off with crowbars and that kind of stuff. It, she's going to have to. I don't know. I think it's going to be really tense, man. I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be good. I'm, I'm excited about that because I thought they were going to leave that whole story behind. I was a little bit worried with. Yeah, I didn't know days. what they're going to do. I was like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was. It was not that those weren't bad. I mean, those were good characters, but I was like, oh man, I want to yeah. keep seeing what happens. You know, so. Um. And so they're going to be doing this. It's going to overlap with The Wolf Among Us. So I'm kind of... Yeah. It makes sense with... I'm guessing this probably comes out near the end of the mid-season break for the show. Uh, that's one mm-hmm. of the rumors. Um, so it makes sense from that perspective. But for Telltale, like... I don't know. Kind of kind of blowing their load here. <laughs> like, mm. the, this game's probably going to sell no matter when it comes out. So... Um, I don't know. It, it that that was kind of curious. I thought they would wait, let the wolf among us like soak it all in, but um, yeah, who knows? Who knows? But yeah. I'll be really curious to see how it turns out too. Um, are we up for another another round? I guess. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Speaking of video gaming, um, let's start with that game that Ethan and I have both been playing. We've been streaming this a lot the last couple days. So we returned yeah. to Path of Exile. We did. Why did you return did. to Path of Exile? You know, um, so the the actual release, the official release came out last week. Mm-hmm. And I was really curious to see what they had done to the game since I played. I played about two or three weeks pretty pretty consistently back. Oh, man, I was going to say last January, February, around that yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And at that point, it was a real solid game. I, I thought it was a good game. There were some connectivity issues, um, you know, some polishing that needed to be done graphically. And I got back into it just because I wanted to see where they were going. Because I, I kind of felt like I had my fill. You know, I was like, okay, this is enough. I kind of got tired of the point-and-click games. I went from, again, Diablo 3, Torchlight 2, uh, this game, then Van Helsing. And I was like, ah, I'm kind of done at this point. But I jumped back into it. And surprisingly, it it grabbed hold of me really quick, actually. Um to the point that I started a new character, uh, a witch, and actually, Justin, you actually began a witch as well. Yeah. Um, and wait, wait, I played wait, through. Say, and did you say you started a new character? Yeah, completely. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, you've yeah, you have played yeah. a little bit more than I have. <laughs> I, I yeah, I kind of got into it because well, because I'd seen, I, I saw your uh, post about trying to get at least twenty five hours of streaming in before the actual marathon began. So I was like, yeah, I need to. Like, I wasn't feeling good yesterday. I was like, okay, I can stream. And then it, it's pretty easy. It's just an easy game to stream. I think yeah. those kind of games are really easy Fuck. because... You, have, um, you, have you played with the tools? The in-game tools? They built that up. They have, like, uh, they have like Twitch integration built in, and they have just the whole interface. It's, oh, um, it's, I wasn't even paying attention yeah, to it. Yeah, it's yeah. Like some, like, just enter your info. 
Um, where do you want your webcam to go? How big do you want it? Go. <laughs> all from the wow. all from in game. That was pretty Because I was gonna say, like, polish wise, they went I mean, it, it looks even better and it plays even better than it did, but I didn't even realize that kind of stuff. So I mean this is a game that oh, I mean, wow. I mean good. I'm glad. Like I'm this, like this is one of the best free to play oh, games. Sh- fucking free to play outside of Planet Side Two. Like yeah, like and there's like you don't have to buy anything. Now I'm going to buy something eventually because I feel like you should. That's how you support this kind of stuff. Um, mm. But I'm, it, it just surprises me. Like I'm waiting for the day that they say, okay, we actually have to start making some money. But obviously they're making decent money, or else they would have put changes into place at this point right now. And again, like Josh Lee always says, there's whales, and I'm sure there are, and I've seen them. They have all the uh, because the stuff that you can buy is usually it's like inventory space and pets and I saw they had like, like a flare to put on your character for twenty bucks. So I think it's uh, at least it, it's. 10, 10 points in that system or is a dollar. So mm-hmm. for 200 points, for 20 bucks, they had like their Halloween pack, which was just, it's all like uh-huh. costumey things and pets. And um, I was just like, I would never do that. But like, I kind mm-hmm. of wanted, I don't know, you hit this, hit a point with a game like this. I want to give them the money somehow. So I'll find something dumb, yeah. dumb to buy. Like, you know, I don't know what I'll dress my witch up as, but uh, uh, yeah. One of my ideas that I wish they did have, though, and I don't know if this is in the shop, but they should add it, is give me the the op, the other gender version of the cla- of the same class, like because mm. um, it's I like I don't mind the the set character models for each class, uh, but mm-hmm. the fact that you can't swap between genders, it's just a another I don't know. It seems like something they they could work in there. It's a lot of artwork. Yeah, I've said that easily, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. Well, and I and I th- I mean, I, I was kind of thinking that too, but I don't know. I, I think each of those characters have their own person. Like I, I was kind of torn with that because I kind of agree, but then I think they also have their own personalities. Like unlike Diablo three, in some of those games where those characters are more like blank slates. I mean, these characters kind of came with backstory. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure they're gonna add that. I mean, they they I feel like they've figured stuff like a lot of stuff out already. Like they they're on top of things. Like every time I thought like oh this needs this, mm-hmm. they got it. You know. So, um, but I'm I'm excited about I'm excited about getting back into it. But I'm excited about actually being social in that game and actually playing with people. Oh, yeah. Um, something that I don't usually do in these kind of games. And I'm I'm kind of focusing my witch character at this point to be uh, part of an ensemble, if you will. Uh, she's not doing too bad at this point. But, I mean, I think that she'll be really good when somebody can kind of protect her, you know, yeah. and have a, you know, have a tank kind of pulling off some um, some of the aggression, that kind of stuff. So well, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Sounds like I won't be playing with you since we're running the same class. <laughs> well, I do have – well, I have two other ones too. Okay. <laughs> like I do – like I have, a, I have a marauder. I've got a tank and I've got a, um, a duelist who I, I – is kind of completely experimental and I don't think it's – pretty fragile it's like a it's like a glass cannon but instead of shooting it actually has to punch so it's it's kind of a uh it works sometimes and all not all the time but see that's why i like this game so much is because you have so many possibilities in terms of how you want to build your character and i love that passive skill tree like i like it is the most intimidating skill tree on the planet Mm-hmm. But it is so yeah. awesome. Like, <laughs> like I could spend time just looking at it, and like it's almost like chess. Like you have to look down, like you have to think like multiple mu- moves ahead just to make sure you're making the right kind of character. You know. So whenever I post the live stream schedule for the week, um, I I try to attach an image of one of our featured games, and mm-hmm. for Path of Exile, I put up the uh, the skill tree shot just because yeah. that's what I associate with it because it's just so it's so much of yeah. a fuck you to like all the other simplified systems out there and it's just so intimidating to look at but at the same time you're really only kind of you know you're making one or two moves at once so yeah you know you just kind of pick your path and go and you know you'll fuck up but uh, I don't know any better so um, I, I love it so um, well you know I always thought it was funny when the grinding gear games uh, developers would kind of talk about like in in such a polite way, but they were kind of like, you know, our skill tree is like, it's it's a different. There's a different kind of player that wants to play this game, and like knowing that like everybody wanted to play that, like everybody wanted this sort of skill tree, everybody wanted this sort of customization, and they knew that, but just kind of not taking that dig at Diablo three or any of the other games that kind of simplified it a bit. Because playing this game, I kind of realized like it's really cool with my build, but if I you get to a point where 
you know, you're fucked, you're fucked, you're done. Like, you, you, there's nothing you can do with that build. Like, that build is dead. You might as well delete it and start over again. Whereas in Diablo 3, you did have a little bit of room for error. But, you know, I don't I almost kind of like that as well. So, mm-hmm. um, but, uh, but yeah, if you don't, if you haven't played that game and you like point-and-click action games, um, action RPGs, go, like, try it out. It's free, and it's got Steam integration, and there's achievements, and we all love Chivos. Mm-hmm. We all love Chivos. I, I know I do. Any... I said Cheetos. <laughs> I love well, Cheetos too. Oh, if if, if Cheetos came with Cheetos, that's that's what they need to add for the next gen. You should get Cheetos with Cheetos. <laughs> yeah. Like every time you get a Chivo, you get a Cheeto. Yeah. And we're bacon smell for for, for Jason. <laughs> Any temptation to play Path of Exile, Jason? Well, the more you guys talk about it, the more I'm going <laughs> to have to at least talking. check it out because everyone in chat's like, oh, it's real soft. I have I've literally not heard of this game until you guys started talking about oh. it this week. So. Hi, it actually uh, was that, that one somehow missed my radar. It was the first game I think I yeah the first game I streamed uh, when I started streaming from my office. So back in back during that beta, it was that and Defiance. I think we were playing at the same time, and mm-hmm. um, you yeah. yeah, it was just like again early access games, beta games. I like to play them for a couple big chunks, and then I want to and I drop them, and then. So when yeah. I saw this was in full release, I was excited to get back into it because I remembered I remembered I loved it, and now it's becoming a problem in my whole mission to finish a bunch of important games. Uh, but uh, man, this is just there's there's still I can't say enough about the atmosphere. I love even though the character classes are just basically renamed versions of the same character classes you're used to. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna pretend that the witch isn't a wizard. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But they just they have it has a lot of personality and it's a lot of like mm-hmm. especially for a free to play game like the voice acting and the story that they've put in it's just at a level I don't expect uh, from a free to play game yeah. and, it, and it's all just kind of a a nice bonus to obviously a combat system that's interesting and, and works really well and I think the you know the enemy designs are interesting the the land is interesting the whole, just the setup that. Uh, that you are exiled on this island and just trying to survive. There's no money. You just you trade items for other items and um, trying to figure out. You know, for me, trying to figure out what's actually valuable. What orbs should I hold on to? And um, so I'm a lot of fun just uh, talking with some of our live chat audience when I was streaming, trying to figure that stuff out and, and learning learning things left and right. So hopefully mm-hmm. I stick with it. I'm sure I will get distracted because the flood of games is about to happen. But um. Yeah, but man, this this game will definitely stick with me, um, at least as a standout game this year. So, hmm. absolutely. Well, I've got the uh, Steam page pulled up, and I'll download it. <laughs> <laughs> Our job here is done. Um, so the I don't know how I I don't even remember when I applied for the Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft beta, but that happened. And Friday, I got the email that I got into the beta. Um, this is a deck building game. Uh, featuring the heroes of Warcraft. That is literally all I knew about it. Um, I don't like deck building games. I really, <laughs> I, I really like. I was about to ask you, do yeah. you like deck building games? I've never really played them, I've, uh, but I really liked Hearthstone mainly because yeah. its tutorial is really well done. It just walks you through one at a time, and it is just heavy on the the Warcraft personality. Like it is, it is. It's got so many sound effects from all the games. It's a lot pulling a lot from World of Warcraft, and you're playing as characters that I know based on my time with with WoW and Warcraft Three, and so it was just hitting all those nostalgic marks with me to get me past that initial learning curve. Um, mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm not much of a online multiplayer guy. I don't like to play public games. I don't really like to just go out there into the world without friends. <laughs> and uh, but I played. A good three or four hours this weekend of of online matches, just because each match is probably uh, ten minutes or less. Just in and out, the action's fast. Um, I don't, I understand the basics enough to um, kind of not get frustrated at it because it's just like sometimes you get a, a bad string of cards and you can't win. Sometimes you get lucky and wipe the guy out. And uh, had a lot of fun with it. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get too far into it beyond where I'm at, which is. I kind of have leveled up my character to get the 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 base set of cards that come with your character, but then mm-hmm. you because then you get into unlock like the expert cards and like build a custom deck and I don't understand any of that shit and I don't know if I have the patience to really get into it. But it seems 
really interesting if that's your thing. But it's, uh, I can't say it's just top-notch Blizzard presentation. If you like Warcraft, it's got that that added into it, and the games are uh, fast and, and easy to play, um, at least at the, the beginning stages. Mm-hmm. So this isn't mm-hmm. um, this is still in beta. I don't know when they're going to release it, but it's going to be out for PC, Mac, and iPad. So I kind of got excited about uh, potentially just playing that game casually on the couch while I'm doing other things because yeah, um, it did kind of feel kind of silly to be locked in like throw my full desktop computer at it. Uh, but it's something that you could play on the side of other things as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, that's kind of how I felt about Chainsaw Warriors. I feel like that's an, it's an iPod game, like, like or iPad game. Like it, it works really well on the computer, but that, that whole idea of the, having those casual card game translations, which I think really, really work and I think are fun, um, is definitely like an iPad experience, which is cool. I mean, that's that's everyone loves to have an iPad experience. Unless you don't have an iPad, then no, yeah, that's you're, I you're, hear. you're a dark. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's so no, many iPads. They all have different neat names. I think now. mine's on its way out. I think mine's almost dead. Like I like I mine is struggling right now. Well, they send be, out that whenever they do their iPad or their iPhone conference, they send out that patch that destroys the i the ones that are two years or more older, so you probably just got that. Uh-huh. Oh, shit, that must be it, because, yeah, I still have an iPad 1. I'm still rocking the iPad 1. Yeah, so. they shut that shit down. Uh, so. Oh, fuck. Yep. I don't want to buy a new one. <laughs> I kind of Steal do. it. Steal it. Um, I could. I you guys, it. Have you guys played any deck-building games? Like, I just associate magic with that. and Yeah, I, uh, I don't. Like, like, because there's a difference between there's like the casual deck building games, which you, like you shuffle. Like, I have a game, like a Resident Evil deck building game, mm-hmm. um, that you don't like. I, when I think Magic, you're actually collecting and building your own custom decks. Whereas there's also those deck building games that you're actually just playing. Like, you don't collect those cards. It's just like any other board game you pull out. Like, all everyone has an equal play on the cards and that kind of stuff. So I like the ones that aren't like Magic. I like the more casual ones. Um, but this looked interesting. I mean, I saw a couple people streaming it, and I was like, oh, this looks cool. Like, it's it's it, it's nice because you don't have to shuffle cards yourself. Yeah. And I hate oh, shuffling absolutely. cards because I can't do it, you know? So, yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Takes- I'm just not, like, locked into, the, like, the Warcraft universe. You know sure. what I mean? Like, to me, yeah. it wouldn't be that super appealing just for that. I would need something else to get me into it. Yeah, I, I forget who was... When, when I was live streaming it, some people were saying in chat to remind them of a couple other games, so I'm sure there's... I'm sure they based it off of other things and put their Warcraft skin on it and uh, simplified oh, yeah. it and streamlined it and, you know... Uh, but, it, it, you know, like I said, that stuff eliminated that learning curve that if I'm approached with yeah. a card game that I have no basis in the universe, I'm not going to touch it, but this... Uh, you know, this opened my eyes to at least try one of these games, and I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, I still, yeah. you know, it, the animations are still, are, are kind of cool. You like you throw your minions down in the uh, uh, in the in the middle of the table, and like when they attack another one, they'll just like their portrait will ram up against the other one. And I couldn't help but think like you're basically pulling all of your sound effects from World of Warcraft. So just pull the models too, and like mm. actually let me see yeah. that. And uh, but uh, I think because they're going cross platform, they probably didn't want to overcomplicate it, but. That would have been a nice touch yeah. for me. I was like, just throw more graphics at me. I like all those presentations. I don't. I don't really care about them. <laughs> just go play Warcraft. <laughs> well, this is, I mean, if anything, this doesn't this help kind of weather. It's either well, it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to encourage me to to get back into that game, or uh-huh. um, it'll give me the fix that I need. And I'm hoping right now it gives me the fix because. Yeah, in in all honesty, by the way, they've got your attention. Yeah, yeah. How much, how much longer do you think World of Warcraft has? Uh, isn't Evercrest still around? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I I'm just curious. I, I don't. I like. I don't know. Like, Everquest has had a couple different iterations, hasn't it? Yeah. I'm trying to think. Like, I don't know a well, lot yeah, about. I mean, the, the third history, one. You know, they've already announced the third one. Everquest. Everquest next, with some yeah, that Minecraft kind of, influences that kind of to looks it. Cool. Um, and yeah. aren't they shutting down one of those servers, like the old servers? I thought I, thought I read that. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, they're merge. They're doing a. They're making it in terms of wow. I, they're mer- making it so that you can jump on to a server that's more populated. Yeah, they're merging. Um, so, I mean, so they, it's, yeah, it's like a process. They probably still got seven million players in WoW. Six, seven million. Oh yeah. Players. So it's just like, yeah. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it, it's it's dead to the 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 primary gaming world. But that they, yeah. it's still a major force, and it will be until their next thing comes out. But I still think you know. 
a million, three million people stick with that game just because they eat that they eat that shit up. So yeah, and I don't, absolutely. I don't, I don't yeah. believe I could fall down that hole at any point if yeah. you know if you guys didn't keep me in check. So <laughs> and who knows? I don't know. Yeah, in that case, I don't know if Hearthstone was a good or a bad thing for me. So oh, uh, gateway drug, <laughs> gateway card deck building. <laughs> Get, gateway tech building game call. That's a that's a tour. While everybody else is being cool and doing marijuana and then doing cocaine after that, we're doing we're building deck building decks. games and getting into MMOs. What, what does your your deck building tolerance increase over time? Oh or, shit! Or, that's a good or, quota. Or is there a quota? There's a quota. You can only play so many, you can only play only play so many cards in your life. So, um, Jason, what have you been playing, man? Yeah. I've been playing Minecraft. I was actually streaming yesterday <laughs> and realized to. that. Well, no, yeah, we, we got through the whole the whole stream. I streamed for about two hours, and I was just going to get on there and build a couple things that I had been thinking about. And then I noticed that the server had updated to the new version of Minecraft, which includes a bunch of new things, and mainly it's encouraging people to go out and explore and load. I saw uh, some. I saw some dark wood. Yeah, dark wood. I got way too excited about dark, dark wood. I should be careful <laughs> how I say that. Um, I was just setting you up. But but yeah, it you know so you you know you just go exploring and uh, I had to go quite a bit away from uh, our our area to find anything new. Still didn't find the mesa biome, but everything else I uh, was was trying to come back home with. So that was really excited. I got really excited about that on the stream. So. Um, that was actually pretty pitch. pretty fun to watch you just like being in exploration mode and discovering new things because that's why I like yeah, those I, games. You know, and mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of needed that. I've mm-hmm. just been sort of hunkered down in in my uh, my work. wedge building stuff and <laughs> yeah. yeah, just building tree pods and all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, you know, I finally got into the Nether and, and did some some damage in there, and I just needed yeah, I needed a little bit of exploration to sort of reconnect to the game. So I did that yesterday and. Uh, <laughs> Within probably ten to fifteen minutes after I stopped streaming, the server crashed mm-hmm. and has not been on since then. So uh, we're 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 looking into it, but I don't I don't know uh, what's so, going man. on with that. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's the yeah. healthcare plan. Yep, it's, it is, they're yeah. they're sucking all of the bandwidth from from Minecraft so they can get that running. <laughs> it probably would help out if we, if we put as much uh, power into our healthcare website as we do to Minecraft servers. Yeah. Probably support more <laughs> They're building people. that block by block, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've been playing uh, Minecraft, and then a, a while ago, I also streamed a, a full uh, run through of Oregon Trail, and every single person survived. I was I was super pumped. Nice. Is that does uh, that does that make for a good or a bad like live stream? If for me, all, it was great all... <laughs> because because the only two people that survived were myself and Ethan, and then we died at the very 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 end of the game. Uh, was it a with, duel within death? like only one of us can survive no, oh. no it was essentially you've got to do this task and then you get to go into like the safe haven and i was like one one thing away from collecting and then i i died so it was it was rough so but no i you know it, but you're right yeah i guess i guess you do need a little bit of um it was like a sprint it wasn't really a marathon i kind of just sprinted through it so and i knew all the little tricks and i didn't play it on that high of a difficulty so if, i bet if i turned it up a little bit it would uh, most certainly be a more interesting adventure <laughs> so i may i may let that one lie for a little while uh i still swear by it being a really fun game especially when you you know connect it to people that are in your life yeah. although this last time i did all characters from top gun so uh, <laughs> i was i was i was really into it yeah and i exactly that's God, that's kind of what i, I wanted put, to do but push ice man out of the surprised. station wagon man yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my valkyrie uh, that's good but yeah you know minecraft Oregon trail i've been sort of just focusing on on minecraft but i get this really vague feeling that i need to maybe disconnect from minecraft a little bit and and start playing a few other games um, because I can't tell if I'm getting burnt out by Minecraft. It's like becoming sort of a, a, job. a job. Yeah, I mean that's what I had to do with that and Terraria. Yeah, it, it's like, kind of like we are kind of tired of playing, but you do it anyway. I yeah. love that you you were tiring of Minecraft, so you jumped to Terraria. 
Terraria? Oh, I was gonna say, well, yeah, because Terraria has a little bit more of an emphasis on, I feel like, action and combat, but for okay. some reason, I was like, ah, I'd rather just dig holes and build things. I, I, don't, I don't know. I love building that kind of stuff, but yeah, I, I, I had to step away from Minecraft um, and had to sp- step away from Terraria because I felt like I put so much time into those games within three weeks of each other, and I just wanted to build things like in real life, and I, I have no access to blocks like that, so it was kind of sad. <laughs> But then I um, I randomly saw on what was it Green Man Gaming was giving away, um, was it it was some iteration of Mafia I don't know if it was the the second one or not or Civilization Five, and it's been a long time since I've played Civilization so I downloaded I downloaded Civilization Five for free I haven't played it yet so I might jump I into get that. back into that I, I, I would get into that yeah yeah. It was I, free, so I was like, "Why not?" I played that right after the launch, and it had a lot of it had a lot of bugs for the first couple months. And I was on my old computer too, so I should see yeah. what patched Civ Five looks like on a decent computer. So, um, yeah. But I think, honestly, before I get into Civ Five, I think I'd go back to XCOM, and with that expansion coming out, um, yeah, true. The Firaxis yeah, game never... would get in the way first. What was really funny about the the XCon game is I bought it, I think, where was I? Walmart had it for sale for like 20, 25 bucks on Black Friday. And basically, I fought through people to get it. And I wanted the Xbox version, but I ended up with the PlayStation 3. I don't play a lot of games on my PlayStation just because I don't like the controller. Um, And so I ended up taking it back. And I actually got, well, I won't say... I got more money than I should have for it, so mm. I kind of made money off of the transaction. But that's their fault for not keeping track. Um, so yeah, I never, I never really got into it. So I, I probably need to play that game because I was all about XCOM, especially Terror, Terror from the Deep. That's my favorite XCOM game. Yeah. And um, you know, this one definitely looked good. And then they had that, you know, sort of what was it? Not really a first-person shooter, but um, they had oh, that the other bureau. One. Yeah, yeah, the bureau yeah. came out and. It just looked, you know, I watched most of that, and it was just okay. Yeah. So I forgot about the the expansion. I'm, I'm I may have to jump back into that, or well, every, jump into every, it for the first time. I don't know. I was gonna say everything I read about the expansion, it changes the game. Like it's pretty oh, really? pretty intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you're yeah. It's like zero to sixty. But I I was gonna say like if you, like I think XCOM was really really good. Don't get me wrong, but there are some people that went from the original XCOM to the new XCOM. It may have felt that again. It was a little bit more simplified. Also, check out Xenonauts. I I, I can't oh, yeah. say enough about yeah. Xenonauts. Uh, have you heard of that? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay cool yeah cool Any, yeah anyone out there that's thinking about that because like because XCOM I loved it like I had a really good time like I think there's a place for both those games but Xenonauts is one that I'm really excited for that full release to come out because that is mm. yeah that is the XCOM game that right. people have been. I wonder when they were actually going to release that. Huh? I wonder when they're actually going to release Xenonauts. You know, they've been talking about it for a while. Uh, they were talking, man, I thought they said, I mean, it's it's in pretty good working order right now. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of, um, content-wise, it's all there. Um, for the most part, they just have some polishing to do. But I thought they said before the end of the year, if not early next year. Yeah, I, so, played, I played some sort of, I think it was like a demo or, or something like that. I got my hands on it. It, it seemed pretty pretty good but it makes me wonder though if maybe they're just waiting for this other XCOM stuff to get out of the way and then they yeah. kind of take over yeah, I mean, they, I, that's yeah. what I would do because they, yeah. I, I, we heard about Xenonauts before Enemy Unknown was even announced right so. well they, there, was a re- there was actually a really good interview on PC Gamer where the um, uh, the developers of Xenonauts were kind of like oh man we were, we were kind of hoping that uh, they'd, they'd beat it out that, there. That you were gonna fuck it up, like you were gonna bring out the bureau, <laughs> and we were gonna come in and save the day. You know, like like you know, I'm paraphrasing that, but um, but the, but you know, again, there's place for those games because this one is way higher on simulation, I think, than the XCOM that we have, which is uh, a tactical shooter. That's but again, they've they've stripped out some of the elements that made XCOM, the original XCOM, a little bit uh, tough for everyone to play even me who actually liked the game so well, um, again I think there's a place for both yeah enemy unknown just seemed very uh, base building heavy you know it, it always seemed like the progression of that was a little bit more important than sort of the the oh, encounters you know like the headquarters just seemed, stuff yeah 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 it just seemed more linear in, in the aspect of you have to build certain things in your base to sort of keep going forward it, it, it definitely had more of a linear storyline than some of the yeah. original games which Actually, I didn't mind. I kind of like that. I, 
you know, you, it gives you a, a mix of both worlds, sort of the combat part of it and then the base building part of it. And it does, you know, eventually get to a point where it's just like, okay, I know where this is heading. So, uh, yeah, everything that I've heard and seen of the, the expansion seems seems kind of interesting. It's funny because mm-hmm. I, I, I've, I, I've sort of limited myself into getting into games, and so I'll watch people play them, and then all this extra content comes out for it, and so I'm like, I'm, all, I'm good. So I don't know why these game companies wouldn't just let people you know, monetize their videos and stuff because clearly it's working, at least in my case, because now I'm going to go buy the extra stuff that you just worked on for yeah. your for your game. So, um, yeah, I'm looking I'm looking forward to it, and and that and it helps that I have a, a machine that can run most of this stuff now. So <laughs> yeah. there's a bonus that sh- that should help. <laughs> yep. Uh, Ethan, what else you been playing? Um, so I, people saw me stream How to Survive last week, um, and I just want to say I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> There's, that's, that's, there's always a point when I uh, so our time difference is enough that your morning streams I don't see them until after I'm in the office and I just kind of look back I, and so I, how long did Ethan play this game and he played it for a good good chunk of time and I was yeah. like well he must yeah. like it and that doesn't apparently it's yeah, not the case I get those email notifications every morning and it's right when I start my air shift and I'm like I can't I can't do this I have to work. <laughs> Well, it, it, it was really interesting because I, I talked about it on Tuesday, and I was kind of excited about it because um, you know one of the websites that I go to frequently uh, talked about it, and, and, and they didn't say it was good, but they said, hey, this is this is competent. And, and for that website to say that, I, I kind of thought, okay, like, okay, cool, yeah, it's competent. So that it means it's probably pretty good. Like, based on everybody else's scale, mm-hmm. it's probably pretty good. And it just – Was it competent? Um, it just wasn't. I mean, it was competent, but like it was actually competent. I was like, oh shit, they were like being 100% honest. They weren't, you know, <laughs> kind of under exaggerating things. But it just, it was really interesting because I think that um, the idea of survival games, I think that there's a way to do it and there's a way to not do it. And I think a lot of companies right now are trying to shoehorn survival into their games and maybe they. Does, it doesn't need to be there, you know? And this game especially, it was just, it was really, um, graphically, it was bad. It was just, it was bad. For, I mean, even for it being a Kickstarter game and even it for being an indie company, some decisions they made in terms of graphics, I, I kind of thought, like, you know what, if you can't, I guess my opinion right now is, is if you can't create a game that at least looks 2009 good, try to find, like, cartoony-type graphics, you know? Go for a simpler kind of aesthetic and they definitely didn't do that which to me graphics aren't the big thing but the animations were really inconsistent (laughs) your characters basically swing melee weapons like they're conducting an orchestra and i was like this is this is awful but then you can do these one hit kills you know and you hit the f button and your character will like throw the zombie down and chop its head off and i was like yeah so I was excited. So like throughout my stream, there was moments where I was like, oh, man, this is really bad. And then, wow, that was kind of cool. And kind of trying to figure out how I felt about it because I also had this rule like if I don't feel somewhat positive about a game after 45 minutes, it's probably not going to be a good game. But this one had a tutorial that just kind of kept going. I was like, oh, okay, I got to give it you know, a little bit more leeway in terms of that. And I played it even after the stream for a couple more hours. And just in, at the end of it, I decided I just am not having fun. I don't have time to not have fun. Um, the only reason that I'm pressing on is because I want to see what else I can, like, craft, you know, because there's a crafting element to the game, like in all survival games, and you pick stuff up, you make new weapons. I'm like, oh, I want to make a new weapon, but I was like, but shooting the weapons isn't really super fun. Um, you know, combat isn't really super fun. The level design is really bad. I mean, it's not (laughs) fun to explore. Um, things that make games work. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, it was really, like, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't recommend it. And I, I don't want to sit and slander the game too much because I, there's really no point in it. And, and I think that, you know, sometimes games aren't good and that's that's an okay thing. But this one, I, I was really, I don't think I was disappointed because I didn't very have very high expectations. Um, yeah, it was a cheaper game. So, you know, that's never a thing. But I don't know. I, I just, I, and I, by the end of it, I thought there's a character in the game called Slovak, I believe, who I believe is the same voice actor. I don't know if this is true or not, but he sounds like the same voice actor from Borderlands 2, you know, the Marcus Munitions guy. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, you know what? Did you guys use all your money for that guy? And then you were like, oh, shit. 
we spent way too much money on that voice actor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like that's kind of the impression I got to add at some point. So um, it's it's a game that they really should have waited a little bit more time on because I think it had some potential, but it's just real rough and it's just really not fun. And and there's. Uh, but maybe that means it doesn't have potential. I think maybe I'm being a bit nice about it, but I just it's just it's just not a fun game. And like I was like, God damn, you know, it's been a long time since I've played a game that is not a fun game, and and it being a kickstarted game, I feel like I'm sometimes a little bit more polite in terms of that kind of stuff. But I think we're at a point right now where enough games have been kickstarted that we can start to say, okay, this isn't. Yeah. Not all these games are going to be good, and and you know what? They can have as much heart and soul into them, but if it's not a good game, it's not a good game. Now I'm not going to trash them like maybe I would trash a AAA game because, you know, that's I think maybe that's a different story other than that may be completely unfair. But um, yeah, I don't know. Like like right now we're about I'm we're about a year into the big Kickstarter thing, and a lot of these games are coming out, and I've been a little bit disappointed. I'm not going to lie. I I think that we've I don't know. I've been a little bit disappointed to be quite honest with you. Hmm. Um. That's my rant. <laughs> oh, that was that was scathing. It was, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know we've. I guess there's really no reason. Like I look back at some of the reviews we've done, the reviews we haven't done, and we've never been the type of guys um, or gamers to push through on a game we don't like. Like it's just kind of, yeah. you know, maybe that's just the benefit of the size of a site that we are. But like we're. You know, I, I think there's still value in putting out your opinion that you stop playing, and this is why. And you know, I like these yeah. things, but these things held me up. But not pretending that it's all of a sudden going to turn around for you and wasting your time yeah. with it. Um, and then uh, I was also thinking with some of these Kickstarter games and some of these indie games. You know, on one hand, Kickstarter is still a little bit weird with release dates and people sticking to them and knowing when they're actually going to come out. But some of the indie developers, I, I feel, don't, and I think we're going to see this more, they've got to pay attention to their release dates a little bit more. Because, like, mm -hmm. if you're telling me that this game could have used some more polish and they rushed it out, why the hell would you rush it out right now? Like, yeah. the, you're going to get lost right now. And mm -hmm. there are so many games out there, and... You know, sometimes you don't have that luxury of picking your window, but, um, you know, why not, even if you can't work on it full time because of whatever reason, why not work on it a little bit while, uh, a little bit longer, put it out like in February or something when things yeah. have kind of calmed down. And, uh, um, yeah, cause it's just kind of like, you know, we'll, we'll hit those weeks where, you know, first of all, a lot of these downloadable games, they don't really announce when they're being released anyway. And all of a sudden you know, it gets to be like Wednesday and Steam comes out and there's like three or four indie games I want to try out. But it's like, yeah. ho holy shit, all of a sudden I went from like zero to four. I can't really focus on yeah. one of them. And um, I don't know. I, I the Soon enough, it won't just be the quality of the game or the history of its Kickstarter or its fan base that uh, defines the success of these indie games. I think, um, you know, also having that mark, this strategy around when you're going to release it and how you promote it is going to become equally important again. Because uh -huh. there, yeah, because like, there's so many games, man. There's so many games right now. Well, it, it is, and I and I used to think that you know marketing and all this kind of stuff, like ah, like you save your money putting it in everything else, but like it's unbelievably important because I, I I've seen games that have come and gone and that didn't have like I mean where'd this game come from? I didn't even know about this game till like a week or so ago. And you even have games like Enslaved that just got released on PC, which is, you know... That, that's, that's cool, but that's, why right now? <laughs> you, and, and, and who who knew? No one knew that was coming, did we? Right. Did anybody know about that? I mean, I think it's kind of weird. And this is like, there's a lot of games and you can't afford to get lost right now. And I think that unfortunately that will be, that will be the death of a lot of potentially good games is if they don't have, you know, a fan base already built up through the alpha phase or the Kickstarter. Like if your Kickstarter just doesn't blow up, um, you may be, you may be in trouble. You know, you may be, you funded the game, but I, I like don't rest on your laurels. I mean, you still want to sell the game. I, I hope, I don't know. Maybe they don't, maybe they've made the money like, Oh, we made the game. We're done. Yeah, yeah. See you guys, you know? So well, I don't know, maybe. but we're, we're going to see a lot of, um, a lot of fishiness in re reference to Kickstarter. And there's going to be a lot of disappointments. I think I'm like, and some victories, 50%. In terms of happy, you know, like, oh, yeah, we'll say, oh, definitely. But, like, I, I had higher hopes, and I think it was maybe a little bit naive because all these you know, guys came out. They're like, oh, we want to make the game we want to make. And they are making the game they wanted to make. Just 
They're not always that good. You know, like the games that we want to make aren't always that you good. You did it. And, and, but I'm about 50%, you know, so. Um, which is good. That's a good number. And it's okay not to necessarily like a game. You know, you can, no. you can say that. <laughs> Um, but, you know, one of the things I think that's, you know, interesting about these Kickstarting campaigns, because, you know, if you think about it, Kickstarter, you know, for the most part is, is still a, a newish thing, but it's definitely entering a new sort of territory where now if a company doesn't do so well in their, you know, their first game that they've Kickstarted, they come back around and do it again, perhaps they could use that game as an example of like, hey, you guys gave us money before. This is the game we came up with. You actually have a physical game that you can look at, you know, whether, and, and if it's good, then they could be like, we can make a competent game, you know, help us fund this other project that we have going on. So yeah. it can also, you know, help people as well to maybe not necessarily have something that was hugely popular, but at least an example that they can, you know, show people they, they are completely competent at making video games. Yeah, that's important too. Um, mm-hmm. One last thing I wanted to throw onto this is, um, uh, one of the our friends of the site, indie 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 gamer chick. She, I think her her reviews you either love them or hate them. Um, but she did write an interesting piece on promotion of indie games that basically, um, some of these titles for some of these games that are you know they're decent games they deserve the promotion. The titles end up being so generic that you can't yeah. do the basics of just search for them on the internet and find the game. So it's just like how yeah. how can you ex- expect success without you know, you know, name your game something better. Name your game something that stands out. Like doing those kind of base level things. Like I said, that we're gonna see more of a flood of indie games in the in the coming years, and it's gonna standing apart is going to be the trick. And um, mm-hmm. whether they like it or not, I know a lot of developers kind of complain about the legwork they have to do to support their Kickstarter campaigns to get on Steam Greenlight. And I was like, it's it. You're only to stand apart. You're gonna have to do even more work outside of that game development. Yeah. So, um, anyway. Uh, anything else you want to give a shout out to, Ethan? I finally beat Skyrim. <laughs> what does that mean? I, it doesn't mean anything. You can so, never beat Skyrim. So but you... I fin- finally finished the main campaign. Okay. I didn't know uh, you hadn't beat the main campaign. I assumed you would. No, I okay. no. Three years in the making. No, I hadn't. I had wasted time with everything else. There's still quite a bit of content. I mean, there's still quite a bit of content <laughs> you, left. But you still got the Dragonborn stuff, right? Or did you beat that too? Oh, I beat that. You know, I beat the two DLCs, okay. and then I finally beat the main quest. So there's still the Civil War quest. I need to finish up the Dark Brotherhood, um, and then just <laughs> some side stuff. You've played, oh. wait, you've played 200-some hours, beat the main storyline, and one of the, like, isolated few quests I've done is one you haven't? Was I, the, the, well, I'm about, like... The dark 75% of the way through. <laughs> but someone spoiled... So here's what happened. Someone spoiled the Dark Brotherhood campaign for me a oh, long time ago. On our channel. <laughs> well, well, no, it wasn't you, but it, no, this was like probably like maybe a few months after it came out. Um, and so then there's another mission that kind of I feel like maybe they intersect somehow and so I had a trouble figuring out which one of these I wanted to go into. So but I needed to, I needed to kind of like Give some close space. the case. Yeah. Like, you know, I needed to just say Skyrim, I love you a lot. I'm gonna need you on a snowy day. Did you uh, but for right now, there's other games that need me, you know. So, um, but yeah, I felt good. It felt good to do that. 179 hours into that game, <laughs> um, I <laughs> there's a lot to show for it. I have whole homes filled with jewels that I'll never sell. I'll be like, curious to collect them. I'll be curious to see how much I stream that for the rest of the year, because like, I because I still plan on doing it with all the other games. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I I haven't gone back to it since. Um, Windows 8.1 wouldn't <laughs> let me play it the last weekend I attempted, but um, but yeah, I need to I need to go check on Shadow Mare and Lydia. So, is there sure a Skyrim fine. quota? <laughs> uh, no, no, you know if there's a Bethesda RPG quota, I've met that because I've put so what I put 179 hours into that game, 135 hours into Dude. Fallout New Vegas, and then 120 hours into. Um, Fallout Three, and then at least a hundred hours into uh, Oblivion. I so gonna, I was going to say, if you, there's a... what you have to show for it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> this beard. I, I I couldn't even tell you anything about any of the storylines. Like I just, it, it, it's so complex. So um, so I'm, you know, Fallout Fallout Four, we need you, we need you here soon. Actually, I loaded up Oblivion this past weekend because I was kind of like I want to go back and maybe mod that game up and just go back through and find the stuff that I didn't find because I had never did the Shivering Isles um, 
expansion, and it doesn't work on my computer for some reason now. That's so, weird. yeah, so it's a Windows 7 thing, I'm sure, because hmm. um, Fallout 3 has the same issue. Oh. But, um, yeah, so. Um, so did you, I don't even know much about the Skyrim story. Is it worth, is it, is it good? Is it bad? Is it forgettable? I, I, it, it's for, I mean, it's weird because, like, I feel like if I would have played it through like you should, mm-hmm. then maybe it would be pretty intense, would keep you going. But see, after all the stuff that I did, I was like, oh, okay, like, I've done some something similar to this. It's not bad, but I don't know, like, that's how all those games are, is you, you're so enamored with everything that's going on throughout the whole story, and you take these huge long breaks from the main quest line. Um, and once you finally get to it, you're like, well, you know, I was, I'm pretty tough. Like, I, I didn't think I was going to lose. I mean, I didn't think I was going to lose that fight. So, um, but it was good. I mean, it was, it was fine. It, it felt good to close that book, you know, close that chapter of my life and, and, and move on. Because <laughs> Skyrim has been there for three years. I mean, longer than any, I mean, New Vegas off and on, but Skyrim has just been there, been there for me. It's a good friend. And, uh, you know, it, real good friend, and so I don't know. So now I don't have. It's kind of weird though because I don't have that backup game when I can't think of what to play. To play now, I'm Dude, like, oh shit. You can still play the game. Oh, I know I can. I know, but and I feel there's it no feels way on every now. little fast travel point has been fully explored on your map. I don't. Uh, I I I don't know if it has, but I think I'm pretty close. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm close. I've got what I think like 75 percent of the oh, achievements shit. and. Uh, yeah, I'm, eh, I'm, I'm probably close All to right. that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Coop and I last week after the top video game podcast played some foul play. A oh yeah, beat 'em up that I had kind of written off. It came out right around the same time as Charlie Murder, and uh, I soured on that game. It just really wasn't up for another beat 'em up. But um, I've heard a lot of good. Good little buzz about it that it actually um, plays pretty well, and um, some guys in chat were talking about it. So Coop and I decided to give it a shot. It is only a two-player brawler, but it is basically a story, an old-timey story of of, of gentlemen. Um, and I wish I could remember the characters' names because they're good. But um, you know, basically your top hat monocled, mustached hero. Um, he's a uh, what are the old-timey boxers called? What are those? Um, um, Oh, uh, it's some Queen's Rules boxing, isn't no, it? No, no, it? like pugilists. It's like a, it's like a pugilist. Oh, pugil- oh okay, I got you. Um, so, um, it's him and his 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 scrappy companion. Uh, and basically, the whole game takes place at a play where he is retelling his adventures of of heroic deeds that he has done. So when you're fighting enemies, even like there are a lot of human enemies and there's zombies and that kind of stuff, but there are they are characters dressed up as zombies or characters dressed up of when you fight animals they're dressed up as wolves but you can see like the the man in the wolf costume <laughs> which i think is really creative and um the the gameplay is pretty simple but the uh but the game controls really well the movement's really smooth and the game is all about entertaining the crowd like trying to take care of challenges while making the action exciting and there's a lot of it's pretty much all air juggling like you want to you want to punch these dudes as much as possible tag team them with your partner keep them in the air and keep combos going to keep the crowd on their feet and excited to accomplish challenges mm-hmm. and in that regard it's actually really fun to play i think it's kind of boring to live stream boring to watch because the action mm-hmm. doesn't change all that much and then uh, it does get qu- pretty repetitive, but um, the story kept advancing in such a way that the enemies were more interesting. Like, if I just started fighting gargoyles and supernatural stuff, and I, I really enjoyed the tone of it all, but I did need a few bo- few more moves to kind of keep us interested. But it was it was a lot mm. better than I expected. Um, it definitely more entertaining than some of the brawlers I've played recently. But yeah, uh, but in the end, you know, beat them up. They only have so many notes. You know what I mean? They uh, there's only so many things you can do. Um, and, uh, but I'm, I'm sorry, this one kind of fell at the, you know, the end of some recent beat-em-ups that, um, and I just pushed it aside, and actually it should, I should have played this before, you know, Double Dragon Neon and, and, uh, Charlie Murder and whatever else. Um, so, um, if you haven't played a beat-em-up in a while, this, this, this is, this is a good one to pick up. What, what do you think that they could do to beat-em-ups to, I, I guess, refresh them i mean dragon's crown was 
kind of in that direction, I believe. It, that's right, Dragon's Crown. Yep. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't, I, I, I don't know, man. I wonder if that's because uh, that's about as deep as you can get. Like that, there's the upgrade system and the variety of characters in Castle Crashers. That's kind of where its longevity came from, and the fact that it's so easy to pick up and play, and like you can just yeah. drop in and out of levels. That's probably the best example of a modern beat 'em up. But at the same time, it's still pretty damn repetitive. Um, yeah. Charlie Mor- Murder just tried to do too much with its upgrade system and its weapons and its loot and. Um, none of it like was easy to digest. It's very kind of an inten- intimidating game, and yeah. Um, but yeah, there's um, I don't know where the beat 'em ups go because I feel like Castle Crashers may have been as good as it's gonna get. I think Dragon's Crown appeals to a certain crowd and is really fun for that crowd because it's got a mm-hmm. lot of you know a lot of the deeper RPG roots in it, um, and uh, it's supposed to be pretty fun local multiplayer, but uh. But uh, yeah, there's got to be there's something in between Castle Crashers and Dragon's Crown. But but at the same time, you've got to. I need more carrots. I need more things to do. I need more things to push me forward. And yeah, I don't know what those are without changing its genre completely or mix it, making yeah. you know, mixing it up. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, that that's you know the jo- the genre is still fighting on, but it does need a uh, it needs a, needs a punch in the arm a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> cool. could, have, could have made a lot of puns there, and I try, I, try, I avoided a few, but you had to get at least one. Um, <laughs> then I'm continuing my Bioshock Infinite playthrough, almost caught up to where I left off. Um, so I fought my first handyman. Uh, still don't know how to bring those guys down. I get really excited when I take over Patriots, like the mechanized Patriots, and I had a oh yeah yeah I had like there's there's one scene uh, when I'm waiting for the the gondola to uh, to come in and. I was I took over a Patriot and it's trying to take down another Patriot while I'm just sky hooking everywhere and it was kind of one of those first like big fights where I was using the 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 sky hook for a strategic advantage and, and flying all around the, the level and um, it's been a lot more fun to play this game on normal like there are times where I enjoy playing games on hard um, and and enjoy the challenge a bit but this game is just so. There's just so much to take in about it, just uh, Mm -hmm. from a story aspect and from just the environment and the atmosphere, that, you know, dying a lot kind of gets in the way, and I kind of understand uh, why the difficulty is where it is, and it's nice that you have the option, and I'm having fun with it, so uh, rather than it feeling like a a chore, and um, uh, I still, so every time I get one of those, one of your upgrades where you get to choose if you're doing health, shield, or um, salts... I'm, I'm mm-hmm. just maxing out the shield, and I, now I'm, star- I'm starting to wonder if, if that's the way to go. Like, I'm trying to get all the oh, shield yeah. first. And uh, but I haven't really... I don't really mix up how I play. Like, I've got... You know, I've got my my Devil's Kiss um, and the 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 Shock Jockey. Those are the two two spells that I mainly use. And then, uh, guns, guns-wise, I mainly stick with the Carbine and the Machine Gun, and don't I don't ever really mix it up. So I feel, I always mm-hmm. feel kind of bad. Like this game is kind of designed to, you know, solve this combat scenario, however you would like. And I always do it the same way. So well, well, you- it's kind of built. I mean, I, I mean, I played on hard and I just maxed out salt mm-hmm. and used uh, a little bit of everything. But I mean, I use the carbine and I use the um, machine gun as well. But um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I felt like you had the option to, to toy around, um, even upgrade wise, I, I felt like I could still use weapons without upgrading them too much, and and still would be okay. So, you have those options, um, and I think you can take them. But I also feel like the combat is is I don't know combat. It was weird because combat was really good, but combat always felt so secondary to me in that game. Even though like that's what you're doing for most of it. Like to me, it was like ah, I don't really care. Like I just I want to get past this scene and continue it. Um, and uh, I, I know in hindsight, a lot of people are looking back on Bioshock Infinite and talking about how. The combat like shouldn't have been the focus, and that that kind of brought the game down. All the and I was like, I, I mean, I, that's I don't feel like that, but I do feel like it was secondary to just kind of taking everything in. And I shouldn't have played on hard. I wish I would have played on normal because um, you're right. Like it, it, it disrupts the flow of the game when you're playing on hard mode, especially in a game like that. You know? Yeah, I. Uh, you know, I don't think the combat gets in the way of anybody. That's the that's Mm-mm. the other thing, and. 
Um, I think because everything else is so fully realized about the game, it's easy to kind of take a shot at the combat because it almost feels like the thing they had to add in add in to get you know more people to play the game. Um, mm-hmm. But I wouldn't, you know, at, at that point, I don't think anybody's really in the position to creatively advise this game. It's just, it, it seems just kind of no. so far beyond that at this point that um, it just, yeah, you could nitpick anything in this game and say that that might fix it, but I don't know. I feel like a game with that much development, they, 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 tried, they tried their hands at several different options of how that combat could evolve, and um, I kind of trust that they landed in, in the best place that they could. And, uh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, there are, you know, there are so many different types of games that I would want to experience in Colombia. But this is like, yeah. you know, it can't, it can't be everything. And I, well, and I hate well, sounding I, like I'm making excuses for the game. I just, I, it's, it's just, I don't know. I think. But, but you know what? But somebody kind of needs to somewhat defend this game because, one, this game came out relatively early in 2013. And so, obviously, with you know when you're talking game of the year type stuff, yeah. and a lot of people said when it came out, this is game of the year. Mm-hmm. Nothing's going to be able to stop this. But then now everybody's looking back and like, well, we've been thinking about it. It wasn't really that good of a game. And I'm like, you think it's not that good of a game because you haven't played it for a while. And if you went back, like it was the initial experience of the game, it, it's a it's a well done game. It's a great game. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I've I've gotten a little bit. Uh, not that I, I comment on it. I got a little bit ragey at a few people who have just dug and dug into this game, um, only because it's Bioshock. It has nothing to do with the quality of the game. It's just because these are the type of people that want to dig at a game that's good and find a reason for it not to be good, and then sound intelligent as a result of that. And like I, feel, I I'm kind of like, man, that sucks because this is was a really good game, and. If you didn't understand why it had to be violent and why you had to have combat, then you don't understand human nature at all, and you miss the entire point in the whole game. Yeah. Because the whole point is humans are awful. <laughs> They'll do whatever it takes to get what they want, and sometimes you have to kick a little bit of ass, um, and that's okay. Like I just I don't know. Like some of the arguments against the combat in this game were just were just stupid, and and yeah, I just oh, we'll talk about that game of the year wise, but yeah. oh yeah. Um. Anyway, I'm I'm having a blast with it, so I'm trying not to let that stuff hold me down, and I've I have high hopes for the DLC to kind of, I don't know, oh yeah, restore some excitement around the game. So, so. well, I can't wait to talk about that game with you <laughs> and anybody else who's played it because Josh and I, I remember it's the, the, the day after we both like finished it, we were like, oh man, and then you walked in. And <laughs> yeah, like, you guys were like, you guys were talking uh, before I arrived to record the podcast, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I interrupted you, and you oh, we have to stop talking. So he doesn't ever finish yeah. a, a game ever. So, yeah, um, that's it for games. Uh, moving on real quickly, the kind of the only th- thing I wanted to promote going on is this Saturday we kick off our third a call to gamers charity marathon. This year featuring a game jam along with the the gaming marathon. We'll be live streaming starting at noon Eastern uh, Saturday, November second. Uh, for 25 full hours, thank you, Daylight Savings Time. Uh, we'll see how we're filling that at about hour 20, if that remains a good idea. <laughs> um, but So we've got a combination of um, live streaming games. We're going to check in with our game jammers, check in with some, um, some game development friends that have Kickstarters. Um, we're going to check in with Andy Popcon's going to be there, and some other friends of the site are going to come play games with us. Uh, so lots of guests, lots of gaming. It's going to be a fun day. And um, uh, the entire time, uh, HorribleNight.com and uh, ActGamers.org will be taking uh, donations for Child's Play. Um, just to kind of clear up some confusion, this isn't anything against the Extra Life charity marathon that happens to be taking place on the same day. Uh, but we actually organized this before we knew when the Extra Life stuff was going on. So while we are not associated with Extra Life, it is a great cause. Uh, we have just chosen in years past to, uh, for our donations to go to Child's Play and... Uh, just kind of, like I said, kind of a coincidence Coincidence that it ended up being on the same day because, you know, 25 hours gaming, that's fun. So uh, we'll keep doing our thing, but uh, big ups to anybody that's participating in Extra Life as well. Did I say big ups? That came across kind of shitty, but I, I'm in it in a good way. <laughs> I, I was I was in. Like, big ups, yeah. <laughs> if you would have raised the roof, I would have had doubts about your you know authenticity, but yeah. All right. That was, a, that was a very sincere big ups to Extra Life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hopefully um, we'll be live streaming all day. So hopefully we'll see you all in chat and uh, help us 
tell your friends about it, share it. Uh, you know, we'll yeah. be promoting the hell out of it, but can uh, always use yeah, some. Yeah, spread the word. Yeah, spread the word. Thank you. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, you know, the social medias, the newspapers. Get it, get it in your newspaper and take a picture, and we'll we'll talk about that too. Print but. flyers and post them all over your community. <laughs> yes. Yeah, or all, a T-shirt. Like when you're throwing candy at the Halloween kids, like wrap a flyer in the candy or something. I don't know. It's probably not yeah, good. This helps kids. those kids. It's all. It's, it's for, for the, kids. the kids. It's for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, moving on to new releases, this is actually kind of uh, uh, one of the first big weeks here of the holiday season. So, I guess I'll start with uh, Battlefield 4 it is out. Um, I think mm-hmm. I'll end up picking that up maybe after the rush. I can see us playing that on PC. I'm kind of curious to see how the next-gen stuff looks. But um, yeah, I don't have any immediacy to play this game, but I also didn't play much Battlefield 3. So if I get a crew together, I'll play it. But until then, I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see. Wait for your wait for your squad to buy the game. But I will wait until I know that at least three other people that I know <laughs> are going to buy it, and that those people will actually play with me. Because that is just right. not a game that you just want to play by yourself. Right. Although, have been reading it. Their single player is very improved. They uh, mm. that it's actually worth. Well, that's not saying much. Right. <laughs> that's. They didn't go that far, but that's good. So uh, yeah. So with some of you know with the Watch Dogs delay and um, some other PlayStation Four delays, I've been looking for the game for that new system. And um, while I wrote a scathing review of Assassin's Creed Three, not really, but I didn't like that game. Um, I've played all but one Assassin's Creed game and thought I was had sworn off the series, but these initial reviews of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag have me a little concerned. Um, because they it sounds like they they fixed some stuff that held me up from Assassin's Creed 3 and I'm, so I'm kind of thinking this might be my my next gen game, but we'll see if I can hold strong. Pirates, man. No pirates. What happened? Oh, okay. <laughs> thought, I went, thought I went silent. Okay. Anyway, oh, yeah, no, 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 wait, cut out for a second. Sorry. Oh, yeah. And um, oh, Aaron got Assassin's Creed. 4. He's got all the games. Aaron's got all the games in chat. He got Batman last week. I don't know. Let me how, know how it is, Aaron. The all the hunting and the pi- the pirating stuff is, may may end up drawing me in. Um, and it, it, they said it gets right to the action. Read, so well. But I keep reading everything. Like I don't know nothing about Assassin's Creed. I'll probably never jump into one just because I have I don't know the backstory. I feel like that's important. But everything I read, it makes it look like this was just a pirate game that they added Assassin's Creed to. Like I'll be curious how you guys feel about it. That's yeah. that's because I'm like I'll jump into that because then I don't have to worry about the backstory at all. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. The story is now the weakest part of Assassin's Creed. So, uh, but they did no, say there's no. memorable characters in this one and hunting great red mm-hmm. sharks and. That kind of shit. So, um, beyond Wales that, too. beyond that, Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures for the Wii U and everything else. Finally, uh, finally. Tell me, three D Pac-Man. Oh, he still freaks me out. Like that, the the like the modern day Pac-Man character with the red gloves. Yeah, he just he still doesn't look right to me. Um, yeah. Hey, Angry Birds Star Wars for three DS. Uh, Sonic Lost Worlds for all the Nintendo stuff. Wait, wait. How much is Angry Birds? Uh, it's, let's. Oh. So this is it at twenty nine ninety nine? I wonder what's going on there. Well, I would I if no I idea. cared more, I would look into that. But that does not sound especially like after Rovio insulted Nintendo. Yeah, but uh, that's neither here nor there. I'm seeing thirty nine ninety nine for for Wii, forty nine ninety nine for Wii U. Price tag is insulting everybody that's ever played a video game. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Is that for the case? They're you're buying the case. It's an extra special case. Yeah, that's yeah. oh, quote wow. from Aaron: You got assassins in my pirates. Yeah, it, well, like it yeah. sounds like it's more of a pirate game than an assassin. Game. It's deep inside this assassin's deep inside that pirate. We need to we need to get him some medical attention. And then the other the other weakness I'm having this week, WWE 2K14. Got mm. decent reviews. Um, it's kind of one of those moments where one, it's not coming out. It doesn't look like it's coming out for PC, so I don't have that option. But it's kind of like yeah. end of a console generation, the last hurrah of this engine, which you know. It, it, it's been okay. It's kind of one of those games you don't want to buy it every year. But they threw in so much like old school WrestleMania stuff and old school like plot lines and characters 
I kind of think, like, if I'm going to own a wrestling game, this is probably the one I should pick up. So don't be, don't be surprised to see a WWE pop up on the charity marathon. Mm. At least in the All-Stars form, but if I cave to 2K14, that, that's, that's a possibility. So, so reviews are swaying me. Um, what else we got? Well, I don't think we mentioned the Saints Row 4 Dominant Matrix pack. But that was out last week. Ethan, are you yeah. going to try that out? No? No. Oh, that's a scrunchy face. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm... All right. I, I enjoyed Saints Row 4, but I, I think I'm done with Saints Row. Like, I'm, I'm okay with the amount yeah, of time. Yeah, I totally, totally get that. Like, yeah. Yep. It's a great one-off. Saints Row 4 is a great one-off, but I don't want to go back to it. Um, mm uh, Steam is having a big Halloween sale, and a bunch of mm-hmm. uh, more Halloweenish games came out. Blood of the Werewolf, Deadly Premonition, Director's Cut, um, Ma- Master Reboot. I don't know anything about that one. Um, uh, do, do, do. Lily looking through. That was an indie game platformer. Soda Drinker Pro. That was on everybody's list. Oh there. yeah. <laughs> Good. Just waiting um, on that one too. Just double checking here. Doodle Jump Adventures. Apparently, Doodle Jump Adventures. Doodle Jump con- continues. And let me double. Doodle check. Jump Adventures isn't Doodle Jump just a game where yeah. you jump up? I, I'm still waiting for the Doodle Jump Connect game to come out. Did that ever come out? Uh, oh, sl- that'd be cool. Slender the Arrival. I can't tell the Slender games apart. I kind of think I know. I can't what, either. Yeah. So, so I, I, I mean, do you guys know anything about this? Because I'm, I'm like, I, is this the one you're supposed I to get? I hope that they've added the to one? it. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking because I know that there was a bigger one. They're like, oh yeah, it's way you know, it's, there's more. The to official it. video but, game adaptation of Slender Man, de- okay. developed in collaboration with the creator. So that might be. Oh, someone created that. Oh, okay. Yeah, a dude. Okay. Yeah, just some guy. Um, All right. Dungeon Dashers, uh, fast-paced. I can't tell if it's a roguelike or not, but fast-paced dungeon crawler look kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, and then. I think that's about it. I thought there was a one other thing I wanted to ask you about, Ethan. Did you have you played the Halloween stuff for Don't Starve? That was out last week. No, 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 not yet. I needed to jump into that because that kind of looked it, that looked really interesting. I was yeah. really, yeah, really shocked by that. But I was like, oh man, yeah, let's do it. So I should do that. I should do that for Halloween. Yep, that'd be a good idea. All right, game pitches, and then we are out of here. Um, I actually had this kind of in the queue from last week, but didn't get to mention it. So, I'll start us off with uh, my Batman karaoke game. Uh, <laughs> not really a karaoke game, but essentially, there were some of these games, I think, even before the Connect. I think just like the camera, uh, at least I know I had this on the Xbox, where they had movie scenes that you would have to like stand in a certain place in the camera so you'd fit into the scene and you'd have to act it, act out the scene, recite the famous lines and it would grade you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of want that, but you have to always be Batman and do the Batman voice. Oh, so yeah. you'll be in all kinds of different movies, but you have as Batman. Yeah. yeah. You gotta. So you're just Clint Eastwood. That would, that, yeah, that would work, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you can't do Clint Eastwood. Could be Clint Eastwood, the game, the movie, the game, the Batman. Clint, How would you even title that? Clint Eastwood, the Batman, the game. Clint clips. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I um, I don't know. I find myself kind of missing the uh, the rhythm, the rhythm games, and uh, we talk about a bunch of dumb movie quotes and movie references, and I want that turned into a video game. So yeah. Is there a better I'd watch way? you play that. Is, is, is there a better way to get Batman involved into other scenarios? Um, I don't know. I was watching. I have, you guys have probably seen. You've probably seen Bat Dad, and then. Um, oh yeah. No, it was the. It was that stupid Arkham Origins commercial oh, that yeah, was they, out there with all the Batman that infiltrated GameStop and were asking for about the pre-orders and where where's the Arkham Origins? Swear to me. That, Oh man! That, but by the end of that, like at, at first when I started watching, I was like, "Oh, okay, this is I, I, okay." And then by the end of it, there's just so many Batman's. Like, oh my god, this yeah. is awesome! Yeah, so, that was a good idea. I didn't know that was a commercial though. I kind of feel so. Yeah, it was. It was an ad. So you you yeah. got fooled. I got fooled. The marketing worked that. on you because I sent you the link. <laughs> oh. Um, or maybe it's not, maybe it's not movie quotes then. Maybe it's just Batman in everyday scenarios. Maybe that's funnier. Like. Batman 
I mean, what would what what is a job that you really don't want to have like a like a gravelly, angry voice at? Like what like what if he's like a like Suicide a home hotline. care attendant? Oh oh Suicide shit <laughs> oh shit! I mean, avoiding the like no, you know, oh man, would but would that it, like would that make you not want to, or would it make you want to because he, he sounded mean? Or maybe like an elementary school teacher. Maybe maybe avoid the morbid aspect of it. Like instead of kindergarten cop, you got like kindergarten Batman. Kindergarten you know? Batman. Like that whole that whole situation sounds. Uh, or maybe it's a kindergartner who is Batman, like a tiny child <laughs> with that Batman voice, uh, kind of pushing other kids around, you know, confronting bullies and that kind of stuff. The real like um, origins of Batman. Or- yeah, like like like. But I do. Because, I want it. You know, I want it like text adventure, or you have to use the microphone. You have to do the voice. I just want a game controlled by the Batman voice. So, but what if you haven't gone through puberty yet? I, you can still do the voice, or you don't get to play the game. I don't care about those kids. <laughs> you're tra- yeah, you're trying to. I mean, those. You, you, you uh, let, let's face you. it. Let's face it. Those kids. If you haven't gone through puberty, you held back real Batman for me for years. Like it was, you know, until I, you know, until we read the dark knight returns there mm-hmm. was you know that was that was what batman should have been all along not you know not 60s batman not happy batman not oh i thought Carrie, you were gonna knock the Carrie. animated series because I was no no the play. animated series was ah. like the first taste of holy shit batman's a badass like, yeah batman's because yeah. until that point the batman the tv show was what i associated batman with like yeah i wasn't really doing the comics at that point so like yeah, so those kids don't have to play. This could be teen and above. This is that's fine. You have to yeah, go through okay, puberty to avoid. I mean, and I, I mean, whether or not you go through puberty, uh, there, there, are, there are plenty of women that can do the Batman voice too. I've heard it, so I don't yeah. think that's okay. a, that's a hurdle. But uh, okay, okay. I, w- I wouldn't want Batman to be my proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> Open up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to stick my finger in your butthole. <laughs> Is this cold? Is this cold? <laughs> I forgot my gloves. I forgot my gloves. That's not my feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we need to find better man. Batman scenarios, but yeah, <laughs> bat, bat proctologist. Maybe that's maybe we just stumbled into what it actually should have been. Oh man, those spiky gloves. That could be bad. Spiky. Yeah, <laughs> they only go so far. <laughs> I lost my tracking device. I lost my... <laughs> oh. All right, Jason, you can change the subject. What do you got? So, you know, these days there's a simulator for everything, you know, truck driver simulator, farming simulator. I don't know why. I just came up with this. We can run with it or we can just be silent. <laughs> grave digging simulator. Because okay. there's, uh, there's a bunch of different ways of digging graves. I don't know is why there... I thought about this today. What, is it, I, <laughs> this is news to me. Well, you've got there's your... diagonal, there's straight on, there's just getting in there and getting it done. Well, you've got your classic you know, shovel, and then you've got you know, a backhoe. There's, there's different equipment that can be used to you know, dig graves and then bur- you know, bury them. Okay, I'm going to expand it. Uh, I think you can just go with hole digger simulator. So we can, like... Different holes. Yes, yes. Just digging holes. With, for yeah, different, just digging holes for different purposes. So, so that oh, that's what it would be. So, like around like a like a community or a city, you're hired to dig different holes of mm-hmm. different types using different pieces of equipment. Mm-hmm. I need my basketball hoop installed. Which equipment will you use? Um, if you level up enough, mm-hmm. you get like the automatic giant power tool that just is always the perfect size for the the basketball hoop. But that won't work on your graves. So you've got to get a different tool for that. Yeah. Um, well, then you got to backfill it with gravel before you uh, put the dirt on top. And then you've got to talk oh, the, to the insurance guys for the people you accidentally buried alive. There's, oh, there's... man. Didn't we just talk about not playing games that are jobs like a little bit ago? What are you guys <laughs> doing? Insurance. And why don't you – okay, I, I still want to – can, can we still dig graves? However, maybe you are in charge of digging the graves for some sort of mass uh, disease or you know, like you are digging the graves for the – um, the cleanup crew and like maybe you've got you know like diseased bodies and you have to be able to you know find the best places for them and then you 
You know, you, like you don't want to put the, the the disease graves near the the playground because the kids will dig it up, and you know, kids and the always ri- chewing on the bodies. You and, know, and the they don't real, get it. They're kids. The real trick in that scenario is to pretend like this isn't the best contract you've ever gotten. Like <laughs> you, you have finally made it as a grave digger. You you get to dig dig the mass grave. Well, and then yeah. you could have you know like uh, an offshoot of it where you have to dig like septic tanks or something. <laughs> Put bodies in there. Oh, I made a big mistake, Charlie. I made a big mistake. <laughs> oh man, you gotta like what? What bribes do you and and don't you take? Like you know, oh, sometimes no. you just you know you, you get that you get that job where you just have to dig the hole. You don't get to ask what the hole is for. You just know <laughs> you need to be at this place, and the hole has to be done by this time. But then you need to leave, and yeah. no, no questions asked. But will you, will, you, will you please dig me a man-shaped hole? I'm not going to put a man in it. I swear to God. But here's a hundred dollars for you to free it. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, we need a, uh, li- a lion-shaped hole, but I can't tell you what it's for. Yeah. <laughs> Good God. Oh man. All right. Let's dig it up. Why not? Ethan, can you go less morbid, or? Oh, you know, I've actually been, and I actually probably shouldn't share this, but I've actually been working on a story for quite some time that I think would make a really good video game. Um, in the story, you are a part of a global ring of character assassins, um, because as we know, when someone is assassinated, they they're martyred automatically. They can be the worst person on the planet, but mm-hmm. if if you're trying to take them out, uh, and you do so physically, people are gonna be like, oh shit. They were right, you know? So in this game, in, in my story, basically people just find ways to make their political opponents or whoever look crappy through all sorts of manipulation, you know? So putting Photoshop pictures of them having sex with animals up or, like, leaked videotape. Like, like your squad is, like, a who's who of Hollywood uh, special f- special effects guys, you know, all these people that can just manipulate all this kind of stuff. And so throughout... You're trying to, uh, you get contracts and you try to find ways of making someone look bad, but you can't kill them. Like you cannot kill them at all. You have to like kind of like I remember in Dishonored there was a, um, you had the option of killing one of the head guys or planting evidence on him, mm-hmm. and you plant evidence on him, you get, you know you get the better ending or whatnot. It takes you take you a little bit more time, but I just kind of imagined a game that has you know some elements of stealth. Um, some elements of kind of like detective, like uh, kind of questioning people, trying to find out dirt on people, and then kind of setting up these big uh, character assassinations. So again, as opposed to actually killing them, you, you set it up so that everything falls into place, and suddenly this guy is known as a sheep fucker. He's like, oh, my political career, it's out the window. Like, like that's not me. Like, how do you? How, what do you mean it's not you? That that is clearly your penis inside that sheep, and you can't be vice president anymore. <laughs> That is like, sorry, we, we we can deal with a lot of different things, but not with the sheep fucking. So, um, <laughs> cool. but all kinds of stuff like that. You know, it'd be it'd be playful, but but kind of a dark side to it. Because, I mean, if you think about it, it, it nowadays with this internet society, like, you could screw anyone's life over with with complete lies, just because people people will believe anything they see, like regardless of any fact. To it, like they would just, oh, oh yeah, no, I'm sure he did, you know, mm-hmm. and just being able to like make a game and utilize that, and as a character realizing, like, man, I've got a bunch of power, and I can either use it for good, and you can kind of target, like, the bad guys that need to be taken out anyway, mm-hmm. or you could kind of be a, a a force of evil and just make all these really nice people look bad, or you can kind of be like that chaotic measurement of of trying to keep everything kind of balanced, but doing whatever the fuck you want. Um, you know that kind of stuff. Is it funny that I just pictured the Ubisoft reveal of the trailer for your game, and then they pull out, and there are other multiplayer cl- character assassins right around you, trying to screw you over? Mm. No. That's not a bad idea. I like all. Th- I like they- this. Actually, like seriously, from the aspect of, I've re- I really enjoy detective modes in games. Like I like like going through adventure games that way. But it's almost like a reverse detective mode because you are basically setting up the scene to frame this person. Yeah. And yeah. I think that could actually be be pretty interesting and uh, how you mm-hmm. choose to use those powers that would be that would be the trick. But um mm-hmm. but I don't know, it would also be like can you make the actual, I don't know, the the tabloid stories kind of f- that that aspect fun? Like is that's essentially the w- reward is if you pull it off, you get the tabloid mm-hmm. story or 
actually where I thought you were going with it was like you actually pair up with an assassin, an, an actual assassin, um, mm-hmm. and when they actually take out the target, so that person doesn't become a martyr, like mm-hmm. for their good deeds or whatever, you still have to make them look like shit after the fact that they're dead. So I thought that's well, cool. yeah, like. Like there was there was there was kind of this weird balance that I was kind of like I've been kind of striking where there are like the actual go to assassins and then there there are you and you are kind of like the first step and then if if you don't achieve things like if you don't achieve your goal then the real assassin is going to come in and take because it has to happen and so you kind of have this weird balance of like you're not doing good stuff but you're at least preserving the life of these people mm-hmm. for the most part so like success equates to them living but them living like a horrible life or them just being killed and you're trying to figure out like what is worse like being known as a sheep fucker for the rest of my life or getting killed and then you know dropped off a mountain or whatnot so like having that kind of balance and i imagine there would be some like and i I know everybody puts parkour in their games but like this game it kind of makes sense like you'd have to be able to get away quick and there's a lot of elements of you know maybe even mirror's edge where you do all this kind of stuff and maybe you get caught and you got to dash out or find a hiding place or whatnot so basically all the stealth elements of all the games that you like um without any sort of combat at all uh which which, i don't know i think like that's a that's a challenge for a lot of games um to to actually not have combat but still be able to keep Mm -hmm. people you know in still you know still in the experience i think it's it's possible especially if you've got good storylines and this would be a game that that you'd have to have you know kind of the same situations in dishonor you have to have really good antagonist characters that you're invested in bringing down but maybe you don't know whether they're good or not you know so i think it's interesting like you brought up dishonored but like the fact that yeah i can play that stealthy but in the end i still end up killing a bunch of dudes but actually finding some creative incentives to move forward and it you know, it may not be the most moral game, but it's it's nonviolent. <laughs> yeah, and there could yeah. be a, there could be a draw to that if you could, if you could make that fun. Yeah, character assassination games. All right, I think it's going to do it for two nights episode of Night Force. We will be back. We will be back next week. Um, there there won't be a uh, top video game podcast this week though. We will be prepping for. Our charity marathon again uh, this Saturday, starting at noon Eastern, on our Twitch channel right here. We'll be live streaming it, and uh, you can donate Child's Play on actgamers.org or on horriblenight.com. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Chat, thanks for hanging out this evening. Ethan, Jason, thanks for jumping on. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>